Hey, hey, YouTube, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. I'm Urban, but you knew that, didn't you? We are out here today at a golf course on the range, which, as you can see, is basically just a cow field. It hasn't been cut in quite a while. There are markers, though. The balls are only a dollar a bucket, so I figured it'd be a good time to come out and analyze my swing. There's nobody else on the driving range right now. So I got the whole place to myself. So come along. All right, so with these first couple of these first couple of shots are going to be with a new 3 iron that I just bought. Well, it's not new, it's very old. Probably ancient. It's a 3 iron I don't even know the name of the brand. On the shaft it says Aculite Plus Titanium Enhanced Core Lightweight Graphite. So, uh, we'll see how I hit this. Sliced it a little bit. Sliced it a little bit. There we go. There we go. All right. Not bad. Still sliced it. Huh. Let's try to hit it off of the deck. Low, but straight. Alright, I'm getting eat up by ants. We're at a golf course in Batesburg, Leesville. And it, I think, literally used to be cow pastures. And that's what we're hitting in here. The grass out there hasn't been cut in a long time. I don't know how well you can see the, the turf here is, resembles nothing of a tee box. But hey, it's a dollar for a bucket of balls. And it's only 10 minutes from my house. Slice, all right. We're gonna, all right, we're gonna put the three iron away for a bit. I'm gonna, I purchased along with it at the same time, I mean, a four iron. Again, the brand name has been ripped off. Graphite club still, but the four iron's a little bit shorter, a little higher loft. Let's see what I can do with it. Slicing it. All right. Slice. All right. So with those three and four irons, I am slicing like crazy. I'm going to compare that to my four and five hybrids. We'll start with the five hybrid since that's the one I grabbed. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's between the 150 and 200. Oh, dead on straight. 
again landed at about 160 and rolled a little doing much better I purchased those three and four irons at the Goodwill store for 99 cents each just to see if they could replace these hybrids so far no that's two shots with the five I five hybrid have been straight as an arrow between 160 170 for me that's good oh yeah all right I had a little bit of a little bit of a slice on that one much better oh, that one was high that's great Oh, best shot of the day. That one went almost 200. Another good one. Okay, so the five hybrid definitely better results than the three and the four iron together. Look at this golf ball. It has a slice in it. Worst range balls ever. Definitely not getting a lot of distance off of the deck compared to when it's teed up. Hybrid comparison. I definitely do better with the five than the four. So the four might come out of the bag. Now that I am kind of more warmed up, I want to give those three and four irons a couple more shots just so we can't say, oh, you weren't warmed up. So I'm going to take these last four balls of the first bucket and hit this uh, four iron off of the deck. Size. Uh, that was actually a fairly decent shot. Let's try to tee. Ah, not bad. Not a lot of yards. But straight. I'll take short and straight compared to long and lost any time. Nice. All right, so it's nine o'clock in the morning. It's already 80 degrees and it's 87% uh, humidity. I've hit one bucket of balls. Here at Indian Road Golf Course, you get this bucket of balls, which contains 
30 to 32 balls for one dollar so can't complain about the price they're the worst range balls I've ever seen in my life I'm pretty sure take a look at this one I'm pretty sure they're just whatever they dig up out of their ponds but hey for one buck a bucket one of the reasons I came out here today was to uh, hit my brand new club which is a Pine Meadow PGX Gap Wedge 52 degree loft. I hit it a few times in the yard but I wanted to come to the range and kind of figure out what my distance is on it. So uh, what I've started doing as of late instead of gripping the ball like this with my pinkies touching I'm overlapping this pinky it's called a nine finger grip and it gives me more control and keeps the club head from swifting around so much so if I set the club up straight at the beginning line it up then get my grip in then adjust my stance and follow through I should be good and I was lots of loft right at about 95 yards now with my age and my health and my back problems and my, the stiffness in my neck, I can't get a full all the way back here back swing. It's just not comfortable with my neck with all the lymphedemia and the scar tissue and all that. So for all of you who are out there getting ready, if you haven't already criticized my swing, I don't have a traditional golf swing because I physically can't. So that's what I've had to do is adjust the best I can and do like a three quarter swing. Straight on, about 100 yards. All right, so I think that's pretty consistent with this wedge here. Now I want to do, what I want to do is compare that to my sand wedge. Let's see if there's a big difference in distance. Same procedure. These bugs are crazy out here, man. We're in a cow field. A lot of loft, maybe 70 yards. Man, I'm getting a lot more loft on this club than I would like. All right, there we go. Best shot right there with this club. And we're looking at about 80 yards. That one went over a hundred yards. Oh, I'm not consistent. Whoa, that was a line drive. I topped it. she can't come to the range without breaking out the big boy the driver I've got six balls left and 
There we go. Smashed it. There you go. All right, right at 200, which for me, I will take. All right, so we are back at home in a nice 70 degree cool house after spending an hour at the driving range. Here are the things I learned. First of all, when you live in South Carolina and at nine o'clock in the morning, it's already 80 degrees with 87 to 89 percent humidity you're not going to have any fun doing anything outdoors i mean you walk outside it's like walking into a sauna but what i went to the range to determine was were those one dollar clubs the three iron and the four iron something that i might be able to replace my four and five hybrids with because I haven't been doing too good with the hybrids as a second shot. Say for example on a par 5, I hit my driver, I still have a long way to go. Probably no way I'll hit the green, but the highest or the lowest iron that I have in my bag is a 6 iron. That's not enough to get close. Then I have my 4 and 5 hybrids, and that's what I've been using but with zero consistency and lots of slicing. So I thought maybe if I pick up some irons, you know, some long irons, I could replace those clubs. Well, as you saw in the footage, the three and the four iron slice, slice, slice. Just about every time, slice. I was getting good distance, but hey, like I said, I would have, rather have short and straight and long and lost anytime. Was it a bad investment buying those three and four irons? Hey, come on, it was two dollars. 99 cents each. So no, it wasn't a bad investment. Now I know to keep the hybrids in the bag, I hit them a little bit better, more consistent, not all the slicing, and uh, so I just need to work with the hybrids. Testing out the new 52 degree gap wedge, I was very pleased with the results. Got lots of loft, got about the distance I was expecting. Like I said, my pitching wedge that I had in my bag before was a 46 degree. Then I jumped up to my sand wedge, which is 56 degree. So I wanted something in the middle. And that's why they call it a gap wedge. 52 degrees puts me between that 46 and 56, so I don't have that distance gap. Another thing I learned, I'm not going to that golf course again. I left a review the last time my friend and I played that course, and I said I wouldn't return to that course. But it's only 10 minutes from my house. I didn't play the course. I figured, how can you screw up a driving range? Like I said, it's an over-glorified cow pasture. They hadn't cut the grass. The grass was probably eight inches tall. So when your ball hit, you got no idea how, ball, how far the ball was rolling. You couldn't even see your ball when it landed. So you couldn't, couldn't get a really good eye of yardage. The area where you tee off resembled nothing like a tea box should. There were ant beds. My feet are tore up with ant bites. I will not go to this place again, even though it's only 10, 10 minutes from my house. I will drive to the next closest, which is 30 minutes, just to have better quality. It's basically somebody who owned a farmland and said, hey, we should put us a golf course out there. And that's what they did. Uh, 
I did learn some things today, but with this heat and humidity, it's just not fun. You can't be at your peak performance, so I'm not going to give up the concept of that three and four iron playing some part in my golf bag. I'm going to go back in a week or two. Hopefully it'll be cooler since it's supposed to officially be fall now. I'm going to give those irons one more chance. If it ends up I have to take them out of the bag, I'll take them out of the bag, take them back to the Goodwill store, let somebody else spend two bucks on them. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for coming along on Urban Outdoors. Until next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors.